The Medici family is no stranger to decadence, nor are they strangers to murder. In this curious case, we are almost 60 years removed from the Pate conspiracy, and given the tumult in the family for the past few decades with murders, expulsions, being brought back to Florence, having the Medici Pope internationally neutered, one would think that family will be important and they will stick together, right? Hi guys, it's time for Royal History with Mike Hill. Let's get into it. Not quite. This is a tale of two cousins, Alessandro and Lorenzo, and how one plotted to murder the other in cold blood. This led to a change in the Medici guard, the position the Medici took in Florence from then on. The tale of Alessandro de' Medici was controversial from the start. He was indeed a Medici, but was unsure if he was the son of Giulio de' Medici, who became Pope Clement VII, and who also lost his father in the Pate conspiracy or if he was the son of Lorenzo de Piero de' Medici, grandson of Lorenzo the Magnificent, father of the most powerful woman in 16th century Europe, Catherine of France, and nephew of Pope Leo X, also Medici, also a son of Lorenzo the Magnificent, who was also in the Pazzi conspiracy. Further controversy arose around Alessandro's appearance. He was darker skinned with coarse looking hair, so much so he was called Il Moro or the Moor, and it was said that he was born of an African servant, Samanetta de Calavecchio. Now, whatever his origin, he was recognized as the son of Lorenzo de' Medici, who was ruler of Florence, and it put Alessandro in the line for the throne when his father would eventually pass away, which happened in 1519. But at the time, Alessandro was nine years old, so he could not assume the dukedom outright. So in the interim, there was a regent in place who was there to guide him and his cousin El Palito until they came of age. There's only one problem, and that problem was that Alessandro and Apollo hate each other more than a vegan hates a KFC commercial. But their regent, Cardinal Silvio Pastorini, was one who was so hated that it led to revolt in 1527. And without Medici Pope Clement VII to help, as he was busy getting his city sacked and was asked by Charles V of Spain, there was the Medici were again overthrown from the city, and Alessandro pulled an Obi Wan Kenobi and hid away for the next three years. In those three years, the Pope and Charles came to peace, and Charles agreed to restore Medici power with the backing of troops and laid siege to Florence from October 1529 to August 1530. However, when initially before their exile, Alessandro ruled with Apollo or was going to rule with Apollo, this time Apollo was passed over and made a cardinal, and Alessandro was made Duke of Florence. To say this didn't sit well with Apollo was a bit of an understatement. He and Alessandro openly had contempt for one another. And Apollo did everything he could to embarrass and undermine his cousin while also trying to make, make it clear that he wanted him removed from office. Alessandro was seen as uncouth. He was seen as not too bright and a bit of a man of vice. The sentiment really wrapped up after the death of Clement VII in 1534, but not only by Apollo, but by other heavy hitting Florentine families. He just so happened to be their leader. It was actually en route to a scheduled meeting in 1535, where Apollo was to meet the Holy Roman Emperor on whether or not to depose Alessandro, that he died of a sudden illness. Coupling Apollo's death with Alessandro marrying the daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor, one would think that Alessandro would be sitting pretty. How pretty was it? <laughs> now that his main rival was gone after coming out unscathed in, the, in a deposition meeting. As an administrator, Alessandro was known to be an autocrat. Capriciously generous, down with the poor, though hated by all the other citizen groups, and he'd go, he would go to the people who supported him and ask directly their opinions on the job that he was doing. He'd actually also, shockingly for the time, was said, listen, he'd also could be petty, and if he found you to be against him, he'd financially ruin you, but he would be willing to expunge the debt incurred with, well, <laughs> sex. He was, despite adversity, sitting pretty, as said before. However, there was another cousin, a more distant relation, waiting in the wings to lower the boom on Alessandro. How you, How you doing? doing? <laughs> Lorenzino de' Medici came from a lesser branch of the family, but he was highly learned and ambitious. He also held staunch Republican and humanist views and had a very, very, very high opinion of himself. He became Alessandro's favorite and his partner in crime during his eyebrow-raising or pearl-clutching sexual debauchery. These acts were included but not limited to 
sneaking into convents and sexually assaulting nuns, cuckolding husbands, and deflowering men's daughters. <laughs> Charming. Together they put the want and wanton in the who and whoer. Despite all the behavior on the part of Lorenzino aggrating himself to Alessandro, he secretly hated him and was jealous to boot, seeing him as a half-baked Medici who was undeserving of the wealth and power befitting the family name, and he came to see himself as a more worthy man and fancied himself to be the New Age Brutist Alessandro Caesar, which would make Lorenzo famous historically, which is what he wanted, and it drove him to decide to kill his cousin, who he saw, quite frankly, as horny moronic. <laughs> Alessandro, for his part, was blissfully unaware that his biggest enemy was someone that he was drawing in increasingly nearer to him. The plot was to be surprisingly simple. Lorenzino would bait Alessandro with the <coughs> amorous allurements of a very pretty woman who happened to be his sister, Katerina, and he and his lackey, Scoroncoccolo, would be waiting in to kill him. On January 5th, Lorenzino lured the Duke to his place to get some married familial Hello Kitty. The Duke of Florence was overexerted by the time the meeting was supposed to take place, not to mention drunk, and therefore fell asleep while waiting for his cousin to return. As told by Lorenzino, he made his way to Alessandro and asked if he was, well, asleep. When Alessandro made a move towards him, Scoroncoccolo began to give the Duke that good work, and the Duke fought as best as he could, and he screamed. Lorenzino, in an effort to silence him, put his fingers in the Duke's mouth only to have them bit down on so hard the skin was punctured to the bone. Finally, Alessandro's throat was slit and he died. The Duke was then shrouded by the bedclothes and had a note attached to his body reading, Love of one's country and great desire for glory shall conquer. Yes. So he then locked the door, took the key with him, and then rode off bleeding freely from the hand, and he fled to Venice. Lorenzino really thought he was doing something. He really thought he was going to be heralded as a hero and seen as the savior of the Republic, only to be disappointed. Florence did not want to go back to being a Republic, and his lofty writings justifying his actions did him no favors. He was not seen as a hero and was constantly on the run until his own murder, orchestrated by Charles V in 1548. What happened was that the reign of the first person of African descent to rule in the Western world came to an end. What happened was that his son, Alessandro's son that is, Giulio, was passed over succession in favor of Cosimo, another cousin who was from some cadet branch of the Medici family, as was Lorenzino, therefore ending the rule of the main Medici line, even though Cosimo is directly descended from both branches. Cosimo went on to become the Grand Duke of Tuscany, a title his descendants would hold on to like a raptor with a dog until 1737. The saying is keep your friends close or your enemies closer, but with families like these, who needs enemies? Hey friends, if you like what you just saw, please remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe. I thank all of you for taking the time to watch me, and I thank all of you for taking the time to listen to me, and hope to see you again in the future with our next video. Well, have a great day, and be a little, you know, my iconic! <laughs>